Hi guys, I thought I'd do a, a, con a console review, a console or console review. Pro probably one of my favorite systems ever made, and that's the Nintendo 64. Um, I've had mine for like four years now, and I really like this thing. It's got some great games for it. And I'm just going to give you some brief history about it, and also some pointers about about it. Uh, it came out in 1995 and it doubted around the same time the PlayStation came out and it butted heads with the PlayStation up until the 64 ended in 2002 I believe it was and um, I can go, guess I can go ahead and get started. Uh, this is the 64 um, and on the front here Got the reset button and the switch in the slot to put your game in. On the back here, this big hole right here is where you put the power supply. Like that. It'll look like that. And then right here is where you put your. Oh, where is it? Your AV cable. Now this AV cable goes in like that. Goes in like that. This AV cable will work on the Super Nintendo, the 64, the GameCube, and the Wii. So, but I would assume the cable that comes with the GameCube or the Wii would probably give better uh, graphics or quality than the ones that came with the 64. Um. There's not really a whole lot you need to know about it. I'm right here. This is something that I think people have the most questions about. Right here is where the Nintendo 64 boot, the jumper pack is. It's right here. Now for games like uh, Donkey Kong 64, Perfect Dark, Mega Man 64, you need an expansion pack. Well, people will buy one, but a lot of my friends, they can't get it out because usually when they buy an expansion pack, it doesn't come with the tool that originally came with it in order to get it out. What you do is you can take just a normal flathead screwdriver, and there's like a little slot thing behind the uh, jumper pack, and you just slide it out like that. This is what the jumper pack looks like. Not very many people have seen what the jumper pack looks like. And there's a little slot on the back here. You can, I don't know if you can see it that well. It's right towards the top there. That's where you wedge the screwdriver in. Right there. And when you get your booster pack, you just put it in this same slot. You put the cover back on. Your 64 will not work without the expansion or booster pack. And uh, you got your four controller ports right here and this is probably the standard controller that will come with your 64 um, it fits very nice in your hand you know it's very nice um, it's got you know it's pretty pretty good feel this is a standard memory card that will that you can find and it fits in this in the little slot right here It's right there, just like that. And there's also something that you can buy. It's called a transfer pack. And what it is, is you can put it on your controller like that. And if you're playing games like Pokemon Stadium, you can put a Game Boy or Game Boy Color game in here, and you can use the Pokemon on that game on the Pokemon Stadium game. Uh, game goes in right there. Um, this game is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, by the way. Now on the back here, or on the bottom of the console, there's this little slot that has like the words, it has EXT, which I believe stands for like exterior. When you take that off, we got this little slot on the bottom. Now, people, a lot of people are wondering what that's for. 
what it's for is it was only released in Japan. There was something called the Nintendo 64 DD, which it was basically something that looked exactly like a 64. And it would fit on the bottom of this thing. And it came with games that it looked, they were a little bit smaller than this. And they would fit in a slot in the front. And you could, and apparently I think they were better graphics. And some games I believe were like, there's a Sims game and there's a couple of other games called like Mario Artist, which is like Mario Paint. And there was this other weird game, I can't remember. Um, there, if you want more about the 64, if you want more info about the 64 DD, you can look at it on the internet. Um, and also, there's also an attachment on the f that you can put on the top. I believe is only released in Japan, where you can put it on the top, and you can play Nintendo and Super Nintendo games on here. So all in all, there's like two attachments you could buy. Now I believe if you want to buy a six a Nintendo 64 DD or the the attachment to play Nintendo or Super Nintendo games, you need to have a Japanese 64. I mean, I'm not 100% positive, but like in order to play Japanese Wii games, you need a Japanese Wii. So I would assume it would be roughly the same thing for the 64. Um, but other than that, that's all I can really say about the 64. You know, you got if you ever this is the AV cable to buy. They do have another one that you can plug in the antenna. It's not. I mean the it's not as good. I mean, I can't tell that big of a difference between the two, but really, if you if you look at like the quality, like if you look at the technical aspects of it, you can There is a big difference between AV and the antenna cable. Now, apparently, you can buy a component cable for the 64, which I don't. I don't know why they would. I don't know how you could get a component cable but some people have said that you can buy a component cable for the 64 I don't know if that's true or not but you know I don't know but that's basically a review of the 64 the launch title for the 64 was Super Mario 64 and the last game was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 and only 396 cartridges were made so if you're ever lucky to see one I would highly recommend you buy it. I have seen one before, but I didn't buy it, which I regret to this day. I can't believe I didn't buy it. But, you know, if you don't have a 64, or if you're not into retro gaming, you know, this is a great system to have. You know, this thing competed with the PlayStation, and, you know, this thing, you know, had cartridges. I think probably the, one of the best things about this was on the PlayStation, people had to wait for like the discs to load you know cartridges were more faster but I think with the I think the PlayStation had better graphics but great games for the 64 include Mega Man 64 Zelda Ocarina of Time GoldenEye uh, Majora's Mask Mega Man 64 Wave Race 64 Mario 64 Donkey Kong 64 you know some some pretty great games um, if you ever see a 64, check it out. I mean, it, it shouldn't be that expensive. Probably only 40, 50 bucks if you ever see one. There are some limited editions. Like, I, I used to own a Pokemon version. And it was blue, and it had, like, a Pokeball on one side, and then there was a Pikachu on the other side. But, you know, check. If you ever see a 64, like, in a store, or, like, a used game store or garage sale, I would recommend buying it, because... There are some great games for this thing. I mean, even though the graphics are nowhere nearly as good as, you know, the PS3, the 360, or the Wii, it still has some great games out there. And um, I really think you should check out the 64. It, this is a really great console to have if you're into if you're into video games. That you won't go wrong if you buy the Nintendo 64. I highly recommend you buy one if you ever see one.